You got to do the same. You ain't a boy. We went to the finals last year. And it's curvy, curvy. What's your best? You were in the playoffs. At least, and I was out of the strike. He strikes down me. Well, guys who are obsessive sophomore players, they want a game every minute. They want to play. They they sit at home. And they're known. Their softball junk is known. You know that that Joe Glantz, a great player, if you can get him, he'll play for you anytime. So you got a decent team. He won't play for lousy teams. No good softball player wants to play for a lousy team. But you call him and say, Joe, you got a game this afternoon? No. Hey, I can use a guy. I can use a guy in center field. Can you come out? Yeah. What we're, 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 we're time? There are guys like this who who, who play 150 games a summer. Well, when you consider that, that's that's all a major league ba- baseball player plays, and he doesn't do anything else. Well, this guy may be a baggage man. He may work in a factory eight hours a day, and he still will squeeze 150 games a summer in every day after work. He will play because he loves it. He loves it. He loves that moment when the bat hits the ball and he gets the fast jump in center field and he's moving and he leaps up and makes that over the shoulder catch. I mean, that's it. It's the fun. It's the fun of the game. If you work for the state of Chicago Police Department, it's very easy to put together a great team. All cop teams are good teams because they're made up primarily of Chicago, native-born Chicagoans who play softball, macho males, uh, and it's easy to put out a, a good company team. If you play for a company like mine that has a very relatively small number of people, and a lot of them are Ivy Leaguers who aren't very good at softball because they don't want to hurt their hands, uh, then it's very hard to put out a good softball team. So I, my team is not a pure Sun-Times team. No, I admit there are people on my team who may not work for the Sun-Times. I mean, I don't. I, a ringer is somebody you bring out, uh, a special player you may pay for a money game. But I, I, you know, we don't have guys like this. And my ringers are really, my best players are not ringers. Uh, I mean, the best player on my team is obviously me, and I'm not a ringer, uh, but I do have a couple of guys who don't earn all their income working for my team. <laughs> the greatest team five years ago in America was a team called the Strikers. They were the defending national champions. They were the greatest team you ever saw. And so one weekend... The following year, their manager, who was also my chief ringer, called me and said, we need a pitcher this weekend. I said, who needs a pitcher? Hey, Sammy, get around. So, I said, you need a, ring, a pitcher? Me? He said, yeah. We're in a big tournament, important tournament. we got to have a pitcher. So I went out, and here I am, pitching for the strikers against a super team. So they played nothing the super. These teams, the super teams all play super teams. And we won. We played another game in the afternoon. We won. Now we got to play in the evening. And I, you know, I'm, I'm high. I'm high. Ooh, I'm high. Because I'm not only pitching, but I'm hitting. I was two for three in both games. So we go out that night and we win again. Oh, man. Now I did it. I did it. I, I pitched for the strikers. Well, we went out and had a few drinks. Now my family's in Wisconsin. I have a summer home in Wisconsin. So now i got to go from the suburb to Wisconsin. I don't know how to get to Wisconsin from the suburb. So we have a few beers, and I take off to Wisconsin, and I get lost. And it's very easy to get lost in Wisconsin. Wisconsin all looks alike. So I'm driving around, and I see this sign that says Roadhouse. Pull in, go in, I want directions. While I'm there, I have a drink. I got my uniform on with a jacket over it. A striker's uniform. World champion striker. So I got my jacket on. So I go and have a drink. And I ask the guy for directions, give me directions. And like all Wisconsin rural roadhouses, everyone's there. You know, teenagers shooting pool, adults eating dinner, drunks drinking. And everybody, everybody goes to the saloons in Wisconsin, a little town. So finally, the bartender says to me, uh, what, have you been playing softball? I said, no, I was walking around with spikes on my shoes, went fishing. 
I haven't played softball. He said, where do you play? Chicago. Said, where do you play? 12 inch, 16 inch, 16 inch. He said, oh, we play 16 inch up here. I said, so really? I didn't know they played with guys. Yeah, we got a decent team. Uh, the Pell City Dannons. Did you ever hear of us? I said, the Dannons. Have I ever heard of the Dannons? The Dannons are the only non-Chicago team ever to finish in the top three in the Nationals. You have a super team. You finished third last year in the Nationals. You have a marvelous team. And he says, hey, he knows about our team. And everybody in the bar gets excited because a guy knows about their team. And they're all running up and saying, you know about our team, huh? You know, we got a great team. We finished third in the Nationals, blah, blah, blah. And they're all excited. And so we're all talking about how good the Dannons are, and they're good because they have Chicagoans who go up there and play on their team. So... And the bartender, in a pause in the conversation, says, Who do you play for? I said, Who do I play for? Zip. The Strikers, National Champion. <gasps> My God! He's a striker! Because when they finished third, the Strikers finished first, and they got hysterical. People were running up to me saying, He's a striker. Oh, my God. He's a striker. Let me shake him. Oh, you're a striker. And people were running up. Give him a drink. He's a striker. And it was, it was, I knew I knew then. I knew then how it felt to be Mickey Mann or Willie Mays. They were just, it blew their minds. But finally, there's old geezer. An old geezer standing in the barn. He looks over at me. He said, what the hell position do you play? <laughs> I swear I don't play at all. Uh, I pitch occasionally. Uh, the game really got started in Chicago uh, around uh, when I grew up. There was big league softball in Chicago. You had stadiums, your Windy City League. You go out and pay a dime to get in. You see three games. But every, every neighborhood in the city played 16 in softball. My father owned the saloon. My father on a saloon. My father's class was the team. And that, this was big time. When you lived in a neighborhood where a guy sponsored a serious team, a serious team, I mean, a kind of team that was, where you'd say, we're going to play a south side team. We're a north side team. We're going to play a south side team. And this is maybe 1941. And we're playing for 100 spots. Now, 100 bucks, 50 bucks was a, a damn good salary in those days. 100 bucks, you were an executive. We're talking about like $1,000 today. And when the word would go out to the neighborhood, the Blue Sky Lounge team is playing the Purple Snakes on 63rd Street, a bunch of Lithuanians. Then, you know how many people would come out for the game in the neighborhood? Two, three thousand people. And this was the biggest event of the month, maybe the year. This was a big deal. And, you know, you run up and down, pass the hat, collect money. Collect money. What are you collecting money for? We're collecting money. And the guys throw nickels in and pennies in there. Well, what you collect money for is a drink afterwards. You never told people you collected money for. You know, they automatically, you know. That's the way the America was 40 years ago. They throw the money in. And it's, you have this incredible game. Hopefully you would win it. I got to play on, on that team. Of course, my father owned it, but I was still good enough to make it. And it was the greatest thrill of my life as a kid, playing on my old man's saloon team. Because these were great ball players. We had a first baseman, Joe Gabrowski, who wound up as a played 14 years in national in the NBA, National Basketball Association. Elbows Joe. He was my father's first baseman. Never went to college. The reason he quit high school. Uh, was my old man would serve him beer. He figured, why do I want to go to college? I can get beer right here. When are you going to give it up? No. I'm going to play softball. Well, well, as long as I'm the manager, I'm going to play. Because I always write out the lineup. And I say, Roy go, pitcher, batting, ten. And... I think that what is eventually going to happen is I will be, I'll come up in a game where we're down by four runs, now three runs, we'll be down by three, that'll be the last half of the seventh inning, two outs, the bases will be loaded, and I'll come up to the plate, 
and they're going to look at me and say, well, the old geese is up, so they'll come in a little. And I'm going to rip one over the left field is there. And I'm around third, and I'm a winning run, and just as I approach home plate, I fall over dead right on the floor. Before you wake up. And they'll hold a wake right there. I came up against Andy Crane in the last half of the last inning when I pumped a home run. And I'll tell you, that the Pulitzer Prize didn't compare with, 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 <laughs> with the kick I got as I was coming around.